morning. Welcome for today's vlog. Get ready with me as I am up for an exciting adventure. Mayo buntag, magandang umaga. Good morning. Welcome to my vlog. And for today's video, we are going to Panabo City Museum to discover the revolutionary period during the 1700s and 1800s period. Are you excited? Because I am also excited. So let us meet a lot of tour guides that will tour to us to the revolutionary period at this time. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! Michael. Kuya Michael, the receptionist of Panabo City Museum Park. Good morning, Kuya. So, thank you for allowing us to be here. So, I'm really, really excited to tour the museum park. So, let's go. Welcome to Museum Panabo. I am sharing your tour guide for today. And so, I will introduce to you the literature of this period. The revolutionary period or Age of Reason was not focused on private soul searching. Rather, it was public writing. The mind of the nation was on politics and so uh, was the writing rhetoric. The writing of permanent importance from the revolutionary era is mostly political writing. So one of the literature of this period is the poetry. Most of the poetry was neoclassical, in imitation of English poet Alexander Pope. Neoclassical neo is characterized by simplicity, directness, order, decorum, balance, unity, and an emphasis on visa. Joel Barlow, Timothy Dwight, Philip Perno, and John Trumbull wanted to establish a classical standard of American literature. Phyllis Whitney, an American slave and poet, inaugurated the African-American literary tradition with her volume poems on various subjects, religious and moral, on 1773. She became the first published American African poet. That is all now for the poetry literature of this period. Welcome! I'm so amazed! Oh my god! I had gained a lot of knowledge from today. Thank you so much, Mom! Thank, Thank you, Mom! You guys should take note. So let's proceed to the other station. Thank you so much! Are excited, so let's proceed to the cause of revolution. So, here is Sir. Good morning, Mom. I am Kinos. I am your tour guide for today, and uh, we will learn about the cause of the revolutionary period. Oh, really? I am so excited. The Stamp Act of 1765, which taxed all legal documents, newspaper, and other documents, was met with a great uproar in the colonies. In 1766, this tax was repelled, but it was just the beginning of the problems between the colonists and the British. The Boston Tea Party in 1773 was an act of revolt against the British and the tax on tea in the colonies. Sessions such as these eventually led to the writings of the uh, Declaration of Independence in 1766. A year earlier, the War of Independence, also known as the American Revolution, began. When the British finally surrendered on October 19, 1781, the Americans were officially independent of British and set about establishing their own government. Wow, that's so fantastic, sir. I gained a lot of information from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hamilton and James Madison, the Federalist Papers, and 
7 and 788. Political theory underlying the U.S. Constitution. Benjamin Franklin, um, and the autobiography in 1771, Thomas Jefferson published the Declaration of Independence in 1776. That is the first American who held the power of sympathy in 1789 was written at the end of the revolutionary period. So that's the Wow, that was really amazing, amazing information. focus on the American statesman of the revolutionary period and they were also the figure of the enlightenment. Gracias por estar, señora. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you so much. Oh my god, I know sweet on her Spanish guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, mom. Let's go further to the continuation of the revolutionary period. So we have Mom Jessamon. Good morning. Good morning, Ma, and welcome to the Palab Museum. And here today, I will share you some facts about revolutionary period. Did you know, Ma'am, that um, revolutionary period is also quoted as age of reason or enlightenment? Because um, in this period, the writers value reasons over faith. And in this, this is the period of reason and of it, cultural and philosophical advances. So the writing at this time, Ma'am, Ma, is dominated by political documents and letters. So, most writings in this period Romano is represent political independence, the separation of church and state, the nationalism, the slavery, the closure of the western frontier, the increased taxation, the commercial restrictions, the use of the military and civil unrest, the individual freedoms, and judicial reviews were some of the sudden issues that went up in the American revolutionary period. Thank you so much, Ma. Oh my God, thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much. You know that? I don't know that too. <laughs> I am Kimberly, and I am one of your tour guide for today. So this time, I will share to you about the writers and the major writings during the American Revolutionary Period. So the first one is the Declaration of Independence. The second one is the Articles of Confederation. And the third one is the United States Constitution and the Federalist Papers. And the last one is the Fugitive Slave Act of 1793. The revolutionary period was called Age of Reason because the philosophical trends at this time stressed the superiority of reason over superstition and religion. Science, nature, freedom, and innovation came through in the writings of the revolutionary period. Systems to new imperial regulations and taxes, rebellion, and finally, in a shared struggle for independence, the revolution drew together the 13 colonies, each with its own history and individual identity. And I know everyone! 